Thank you for joining for another reading from the New Testament. We're in James chapter 3 today. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. See how great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. <clears throat> with it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing, my brothers. These things ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works and the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, don't boast and be false to the truth. This is not wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly and spiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. James chapter 3 is a beautiful chapter in that it's talking about, again, the way that we live. He applies first to teachers and talks about the way that we speak and, and what we teach and recognizing there is a greater responsibility in the fact that we will be judged by what we teach. But his greater point is just simply to illustrate the power of the tongue that <clears throat> we say things that we wish we hadn't. And so he wants us to be warned and be concerned that neither a salt pond can, just like a salt pond can't yield fresh water, your mouth should not bear from it the things, even, this is particularly important to me, cursing your brother who are made in the likeness of God. And what's interesting is that James doesn't say brother, yet that's how we often talk about it. He says people. Because everyone created in the image of God deserves our respect. And the manner in which we speak manifests that respect. And then he says with last exhortation that the wisdom from above is what will guide us through to a, a gentle and peaceable, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits or behaviors. And it will be a harvest of righteousness. So today, let me encourage you, pursue that harvest of righteousness in your life. Practice what you know God wants in your life. Reflect it in the way that you treat other people. Because to God, that matters. Join me again on the next day for another reading from the New Testament, making your weekdays strong days with the Word. Lord, make us
us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let your love increase. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Walls of pride and prejudice shall cease. When we are your instruments of of peace. 